the bald eagle, a majestic symbol of strength, and the national bird of the United States of America. After decades of declining numbers, and with a tremendous amount of human assistance, bald eagles have been making a comeback from the devastating impacts of DDT. Today they face an increasing problem, lead poisoning from ammunition, mostly from conventional bullets used in deer hunting. And the fact is, many hunters don't realize they're part of the problem. I worked at a very stressful job um, as a construction manager in construction, uh, building hospital projects around the country. And it was 60, 70 hours a week, crazy, crazy work. Um, and getting into the woods was my release, uh, a time to kind of slow down, reflect, and, uh, and again, it's, it's hard to explain it. You really have to get outside and sit in the woods and then you'll feel it. For me, hunting is a connection with all of this, a uh, connection with nature. Um, not something easy to, easy to define or explain. It's, you just have to get out here. I've been hunting over 60 years. Uh, when my children were in there, Oh, five, six, seven years old, I'd take them out with me in the woods. Uh, we really got them used to the outdoors. We, we camped, we fished, we hunted. Not surprisingly, as people may or may not know, um, lead poisoning has been having an effect on bald eagles historically and currently. They still are succumbing to lead poisoning because of the use of lead ammunition. Well, this is a, a male bald eagle that was admitted to our facility. It was brought by the DNR actually from Beltrami County up by Bemidji. And what we're seeing is a typical case of acute poisoning, of uh, acute lead poisoning in a bald eagle. There is no good treatment, even though that we can get the blood lead levels down to an adequate, adequate level, the damage that already happened in the central nervous system it's severely enough for us that we cannot do anything. In this case, you can see this is a bird in good body condition. He's not able to stand. He's having respiratory problems. That wheezing that you hear, that very high-pitched noise, his attempts to try to breathe. Every time there is the hunting season starts around November and sometime after December, we see a seasonal prevalence of these birds getting poisoned. And this is quite a typical case. It's heartbreaking, it's very dramatic, and the research that we have been doing this for over 30 years really shows that the lead from ammunition used mostly for deer hunting is the cause for this toxicity. What we want to achieve really is to present these to people, this to hunters. This has nothing to do against hunters, this has anything to do with the sport itself, it's just what they're using. The, the bullets itself, and there are non-toxic options that they can use, and in particular eagles and other wildlife scavengers can be free of. There are essentially two types of centerfire bullets used for hunting. Copper jacketed lead bullets, and solid copper or alloy monolithic bullets. All major manufacturers now have a line of non-lead, non-toxic bullets. These bullets are as accurate as lead bullets. They're as effective as lead bullets. Their non-toxic qualities were just an unexpected fringe benefit. Hayden's going to be shooting a 243 using two different rounds, a uh, copper round and a lead round. And he's shooting into a ballistic gel that we've set up at about 50 yards. That gel represents uh, uh, what you would be shooting at if you were shooting into a deer. This is the ballistic gel that we just shot outside. We brought it inside to look at, and you can see the two, where the two rounds entered the gel over here. The lead is the one closest to us, the copper is the one behind us, and where they expand the, ge the gel is about the same in here. You can see these little pieces of lead fragment that are um, shedding off that lead bullet as it travels through the gel. And uh, because it lost so much, so much of its mass, 
Uh, it has less energy. It went through the first block and ended right when it went into the second block over here. The copper, however, continued on through the second block all the way through and made it about three quarters of the way through the second block, ending over here because it didn't shed much of its mass. And that would result in a more efficient kill and no contamination of the animal that you were shooting. The reason eagles get lead poisoned during deer season is mainly from feeding on gut piles, those piles of entrails that hunters leave in the woods. High velocity bullets fragment on impact, and most of those fragments spread into the gut pile. Some spreads into the meat, and it can travel 14, 15 inches from the entry. The Gut pile is left behind with, sometimes with hundreds of metal fragments in it, most of them are lead, and the eagles come down and eat them. It's a buffet for scavengers. But it's unnecessary to have that lead in the gut pile because a monolithic bullet doesn't fragment. It makes a clean wound channel and leaves a non-toxic pile for the scavengers to eat. This is a typical gut pile most hunters do not take the internal organs. They remove them from the deer in the field and leave them. It uh, contains the heart, the lungs, kidneys, the liver, the digestive tract. This is really prime food for scavengers. Eagles, hawks, crows, and ravens, they love this stuff. They'll clean it up in days, if not a week. Um, I've been shooting the Remington Corlox pretty much my whole life. Um, when I switched to the barns, the price difference wasn't much more, but Kane would probably verify as the effort and time that we put into hunting and the amount of preparation and everything that goes into us enjoying the outdoors, um, that little extra cost is all worth it for the environment and for the future of our planet. Yeah, it's a very minimal cost increase. Uh, I shoot a 300 Winchester short mag, and the cost of my bullets actually dropped from the premium lead that I used to shoot when I switched to copper. Uh, so switching to copper, some people see as an infringement on their Second Amendment rights, and it really isn't because it's there's nothing anti-gun or anti-hunting about switching to copper it's more just to protect the environment and as hunters and con conservationists self self-proclaimed uh that's something that you have to look in the mirror and say do you honestly feel that using lead bullets is good for the environment and i couldn't do it so i switched to copper and it was a it was an easy choice i grew up eating a lot of venison um a lot of anything and any meat that my dad could hunt or find and my husband was the same way. So <clears throat> when we look at how much venison um, my husband and I ate growing up and if you think that most of that was shot with, with lead bullets, it's, it's a little bit of of a terrifying thought really now as a mom and I'm thinking about what I'm feeding my own children. So in the average year, we probably go through three deer, um, but some years, I know there was one year where we went through five deer and that's a lot of, of lead that you're feeding to you know three children now under the age of eight years old when that's really their only meat. We don't go to the grocery store to buy meat. Um, we eat a lot of venison and a lot of fish and we grow our, all of our own vegetables and uh, we're starting a small orchard. So really everything that we're, we're eating right now is coming from the land for the most part. So it's just a lot of lead to consume when it's something that we don't have to. We don't have to put the lead into our meat. Uh, this is... It's an indication of the urates turning green like this is a is an indication of kidney liver failure and um, it's just beyond the tail band there when we tail wrap our 
um, an inability to vocalize, all neurological symptoms, ha hackles stay raised, they process they, you know, they, they can, it's almost like a, a sign of blindness where they can see pupil responses returning just a tad, but uh, in a, in a inability to vocalize, it's all symptoms where she'll just sit in, in a field and she looks healthy as can be sitting in a tree, but can't see or process any information that attacks the nervous system, the central nervous system, and she'll just wither away sitting, uh, sitting idle, dropping weight daily, and if to look at her, you wouldn't know it. And you look at her a, a month, you know, three weeks later, and she's, you know, four pounds lighter and dying on the inside. Sometimes the eagles that are admitted are just too far gone. The organ damage is too much. We cannot save them. Knowing the hunters that I know and work with and, and, and have worked with, the respect they have for wildlife is astronomical, which many don't think. But knowing that just switching ammunition would save more eagles every day, uh, hunting seasons or every day in general, I know they would do it. This is an important issue for all hunters and their families, especially those with young children. We all know that lead is a dangerous toxin, and we have an opportunity to keep our venison free of lead. It's the responsible thing to do. The next time you buy ammunition, Think about the impact you might have on the bald eagle, the symbol of our country. We can all make a difference by making informed choices. When you visit your gun shop, ask for monolithic non-lead bullets. In the long run, it's not only better for bald eagles, it's better for all of us. You know, when you look in an eagle's eye, you just know he's trying to survive and he's going to survive, very much like ourselves. And this is our opportunity to help him survive.